Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it gives me great pleasure to address you, even under these very unusual and difficult circumstances, which in the last eight months have changed our everyday life and ways of communicating with each other. COVID-19 has been and still is one of the most threatening enemies for our lives, our physical as well as our mental well-being, for our economies and our social cohesion. We have all experienced many difficulties and the need to remain united and in solidarity with each other has never been so important. However, during the dark times of the lockdowns, which we all had to endure, culture has played a most important role in helping our people we, from mentally and psychologically collapsing. We have seen people in Italy opening their windows and singing for the sake of the whole neighborhood. We have seen Andrea Bocelli singing outside the Milano Cathedral whilst the whole world was watching, thus strengthening morally the millions of audience. We have seen painters creating superb works of art thus expressing their inner feelings. We have seen poets writing beautiful poetry, which will remain forever with us. Therefore, culture has been a savior of our mental and psychological stability. Culture brings beauty to our lives, something we all need. Mega events, however, such as the European capitals of culture and the Olympic Games have been very negatively affected by the coronavirus. The Tokyo Olympics have been postponed. The success of the 2020 capitals of culture have been substantially affected as they faced restrictions in implementing their European Capital of Culture initiative. As a result, the European Commission has quite rightly, I believe, extended their title until the end of 2021. By consequence, this means that the next title holders will also be impacted. The impact of the pandemic on the European capitals of culture is a great shame because promoting culture element of our way of life has many positive effects on society in terms of social inclusion, integration, and economic growth. It enables people to gain new experiences, skills, and opportunities to participate in society and to make our societies fairer and more inclusive. Each European capital of culture has something different to contribute, adding to the kaleidoscope of what European culture and cultural heritage is. Let us remember that Roslav's varied history, for example, has given it a rich architectural heritage, including Silesian, Gothic, and Baroque, but also modernism. Therefore, metamorphosis of culture, which was Roslav's overall concept, was a metaphor for the historical transformation of the city. Its declaration as European capital of culture, therefore, gave it the opportunity to present culture and its role along with beauty in the life of the city and its multicultural character. Dear friends, Paphos has always been at the crossroad of the Eastern Mediterranean and through its modern multicultural reality, the city aspired to become the link between the East and the West, bridging people and cultures and becoming a place of cultural collaboration and peaceful coexistence. The thematic line of Paphos 17, myth and religion, refer to Paphos's cultural heritage, historical background, reflecting and placing prominence to the characteristics that gave birth to civilization and defined its evolution throughout the course of history. There is no doubt that the prominence given to Paphos in Europe during 2017 
played its part in the decision by UNESCO in 2018 to include Paphos among the 34 selected World Heritage Sites spread across 19 EU member states in the so-called UNESCO World Heritage Journeys. The goal of this project, according to the director of the World Heritage Center at UNESCO, is, and I quote, to change how people travel, staying longer in destinations, experiencing local culture and its environment, and gaining a deeper knowledge and appreciation of world heritage values." End of quote. Galway's cultural program model is Let the Magic In, exploring quintessential local themes of language, landscape, with a European and universal relevance and resonance. Riga's motto, Port of Diversity, with its cultural program focusing on the themes of water, work and migration connected with its identity, but also issues related with the wider world. Dear friends, the Olympic Games and the World Expos are also mega events which offer a good opportunity to showcase the culture and cultural heritage of the host city. Mega events aimed at celebrating universal values such as excellence, respect and friendship for the Olympics and progress and innovation for the World Expos. At the same time, the nation organizing them wish to demonstrate its economic and political power. This materialized through innovative buildings, which will remain important monuments, like, for example, the Eiffel Tower for the Paris Expo in 1889, which is now part of our common European cultural heritage. In recent, recent times, the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens and the World Expo in Milan in 2015 both attracted millions of visitors who were also attracted to the cities and, re and regions for culture and cultural heritage related to these cities. COVID-19 has unfortunately disrupted these mega events as well. As I said, the Tokyo Olympics have been postponed and maybe they will be cancelled and Dubai Expo 2020 has also been postponed. It is a great shame if the pandemic drags on and affects further these mega events, for we all know that Europe's cultural heritage is a key vehicle for promoting European identity and unity based on common values and memories, as well as for providing a positive force for more cohesive and inclusive Europe as an antidote to divisive and dangerous forms of populism and nationalism. We have a duty to keep the flame of culture and cultural heritage burning. We need it now in difficult times as never before. I therefore congratulate all of you, the partners of the research project Heritage Opportunities Within Mega Events in Europe, for your determination in going ahead with the project and your objective for the development and dissemination of the Charter for Mega Events in Heritage Rich Cities. The difficult communication and working together. I wish to congratulate especially Professor David Ponzini of Politecnico di Milano and Giulia Giorgi of the Neapolis University of Paphos for their determination in making the best out of the prevailing circumstances and pushing ahead with the project. I very much regret that the event planned to take place in Paphos, my hometown, on the 3rd of last April where I was hoping to meet all of you, get to know you, and share experiences with you, 
had to be cancelled because of COVID-19. Nevertheless, I'm grateful to David and Julia for giving me this opportunity to address you through this video. Let me wish you success in your deliberations and exchanges and express the hope that this pandemic will soon be over and thus be able to meet in person in the non-distant future somewhere in Europe. Until then, au revoir and take care.